myself to remember, oh, right, I have an anxiety disorder and it sucks. So, um, but other than that, for the most part, when it comes to my anxiety, I'm decent. And I'm not saying this to brag or anything like that, but um, to people who are like, oh, I don't know if I should take medicine, whatever. Medicine kind of saved my life, which I know some people are going to be like, heresy, only the Bible saves your life or something like that. Hi guys, I'm back again and uh, we have a lot to talk about today. Uh, just so you know, my shirt says blessed and that is not how I'm feeling lately. <laughs> I'm not feeling blessed, but um, I wanted to wear the shirt anyway for some reason. I don't know, maybe to make myself feel better. I don't know. But anyway, um, first off, I want to give a shout out to my lucky dragon comment of uh, this person. Thank you so much for your comment, and if you would like to be the next dragon comment, just comment anything down below, as long as it's not inappropriate. But other than that, just comment down below, and you might be the next dragon comment for my next episode. So, yay! Alright, so, uh, a lot, ironically, has happened in just one week. Um, I am recording this on Monday. I'll probably post it by tomorrow and or Wednesday, but um, a lot has happened. Um, but today I wanted to talk about uh, three things. So the first one I want to talk about, which will, I'm guessing be the most dour part of this episode, uh, is mental health. I am very big on mental health, uh, very big on people who deal with mental illness of all sorts. Uh, I have uh, mental illness myself. I have anxiety and depression. And I was diagnosed by a psychiatrist, by the way. So <laughs> people can't just say, oh, you just feel sad sometimes. Or you just get worried sometimes. And all that other garbage that people say all the time about mental illness. Um, I wanted today to take a positive spin on mental health, though, since the world right now is basically on fire. Um, <laughs> yikes. I had written down some uh, things that I personally have found to help when I am dealing with uh, my mental health, particularly lately, it's been more depression. Um, I take medicine for uh, my anxiety, uh, and I try to do more natural or, uh, just other forms of self-care for my, uh, depression, but I do take medicine for my anxiety. So my anxiety for the most part is under control. It really takes like going to a new place or, um, just meeting someone for the first time or something like that that might cause myself to remember oh right I have an anxiety disorder and it sucks so um but other than that for the most part when it comes to my anxiety I'm decent and I'm not saying this to brag or anything like that but um to people who are like oh I don't know if I should take medicine whatever medicine kind of saved my life, which I know some people are going to be like, heresy, only the Bible saves your life or something like that. But um, medicine did kind of save my life with anxiety. So I still take it for now. Um, you know, there's always the debate of going off of it. But that's not the point. I am I am going off, off the, I'm going off key. I'm going off key. I'm playing the piano. Sorry, I'm delirious today. I ate like chicken nuggets like a lot for some dumb reason and I am seriously full and seriously delirious so I'm sorry but I guess you know that's quality content for you anyway so some of the things that I wrote down that work for me I know a lot of people will be like oh if you have mental illness you know just rub some crystals on your forehead or something stupid like that and it's like that does not work you know 
It's like, oh, just just think positive, positive vibes, positive vibes, man. I'm sending you positive vibes. That doesn't work either. I'm sorry. <laughs> it doesn't work either. Positive vibes, that's, this is a mental illness. This is a chemical imbalance and you have to do almost trick your brain into feeling better because your brain is literally a toddler and it does what it wants and it doesn't listen to you. You have to trick it. You have to say, if you want to, if you want to do something first, you have to eat your vegetables. And it's like, I don't want to eat my vegetables. And it's like, well, too bad. Otherwise you can't play outside. You have to eat your vegetables. And then your brain's like, fine, I'll eat my vegetables. I don't know where I'm going with this analogy, but I think you get my point. You get it. You get it, right? Anyway, so the things that actually work for me, uh, going outside. Uh, I know that, you know, that is a little difficult for some people in quarantine, although technically you still can go outside, but, um, going outside, uh, my house has like a huge lawn, so I could basically just like walk laps in my front yard and never leave the property. But anyway, so, um, going outside, walking, uh, even just going outside and sitting on the front steps of your door does wonders for you. I think we as human beings, although we are social creatures, we were also meant to go outside. We were meant to be in nature. We were meant to get that good oxygen, not, not this crappy oxygen inside. You need that, that good oxygen, that quality, high elite quality oxygen outside. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway. Another thing is watching funny shows. Uh, when I'm down, I sometimes will watch funny shows because sometimes you just need a good laugh, you know? And I know some people probably have said it. And to be honest, it's kind of true. You, you need a good laugh. I watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine. It's one of my personal favorite com uh, comedy shows. Uh, I don't have Netflix at the moment, so I can't watch The Office. That is fine. Um, Parks and Rec is another one. Uh, I also love watching Mob Psycho, which I'm going to talk about later on in this episode, um, which is a anime comedy and it's kind of similar to One Punch Man. But anyway, um, another thing that I do is I watch sad shows and I cry. And I know this one is probably going to be, I guess, one of the more uh, questionable advice giving to someone, but I have mental illness. So I can say what I want. Um, <laughs> So I actually will sometimes be like, instead of fighting these feelings of numbness or pain or anger or sadness, because that's kind of what depression is. Um, my therapist has said that depression really is just a form of like anger, like uncontrolled, like emotional, just a hurricane. But instead of anxiety where you kind of feel all of it and your body's reacting with adrenaline and stuff, with depression, you kind of just you feel overwhelmed and that overwhelmingness leads to feeling numb. It's not that you actually shut down as much as you're just so overwhelmed. So like it is anxiety and that's why anxiety and depression kind of lead hand in hand, but it's a little different than anxiety because there's, 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 you can't even react with anxiety. You're at least reacting with depression. You're almost, it's, it's not a reaction and it's not a reaction in that. Like I said, you're shutting it down. It's just that you aren't reacting. And, um, that's 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 kind of what depression feels like, at least for me. It, it's different for everybody. I'm not here to speak for everybody. Um, you know, if it's different for you, you know, I would love to hear from your personal experience in the comments. Let me know. Um, so another thing uh, that I do is I cook yummy food and I eat consciously. Now you're you're probably thinking, Liz, what the freak does that mean? So. I love cooking and baking and um, my mom in particular says that I always decorate the food so nicely and it's probably just a form of my creative personality. But anyway, I love cooking. I love cooking new things. I love cooking old things. I don't know what that means. <laughs> anyway, I like cooking yummy food. I like thinking about cooking yummy food. Um, and I think my therapist also told me how important it is to be mindful and mindfulness is not just meditation it can also be eating food consciously which means that you slow down 
and you really take in the food that you're eating and what it tastes like to you and all the senses specific, specifically taste obviously and like break down what it tastes like break down the seasoning you put into it the sauce the sauce you break down uh various other things and you are conscious of what you're eating um so that's one of the things that i like to do sometimes uh writing artistically expressing yourself and you don't have to be an expert um i love writing i want to be a full-time writer as i've said before i think but um you don't have to be the most creative most artistic you don't have to be picasso here but doing something artistic i think all of humanity was meant to dabble in a little artsiness like i feel like bob ross like you don't have to be the best painter you just make your own little happy little trees you make your own little happy little trees they don't even have to look good they can look like dog crap and but they're your happy little trees and that's it and that's how i feel about using artistic expression when you're feeling a certain way um there is a podcast that i co-host with my friend terry um which we are moving to a youtube podcast just like this one called e and creativity and i'll probably link it and all stuff in the bio and descriptions and whatnot and uh my friend terry was saying that she does art journaling and one day she was feeling bad so she just colored everything blue or black one of those colors and it might look like madness but she's expressing herself and it made her feel better and i think that's what more of us need to do when we are feeling down or happy or whatever to express ourselves in a medium that really really speaks to us and i think personally that can be art or writing but even if you're not again like a genius writer you're not dr seuss spitting out children's poems every five seconds doesn't mean that you can't write down a poem of like, life sucks. I feel like crap. I feel like a hurricane. I feel like this, you know? It doesn't have to be profound. It doesn't have to rhyme. It doesn't have to be good. But just to get that out, I think helps the processing of it, which is what all of my, all of my tips are is to help you better process it. Because at some point you have to confront your demons. You have to confront the depression, anxiety. If you don't want your life to feel this way, at some point you have to confront it. But before you can confront it, you need to get into a better headspace. And that's where these positive coping mechanisms that I use, sometimes all of them because it's that bad, um, works. Uh, another thing is I listen to music, which I think every single person does when they are feeling like crap. I listen to music. I listen to positive music. But most of the time I just listen to sad music because again, releasing the tension, releasing the pain you feel, crying it out is a good thing. I know that, you know, when you're feeling like crap and you think that crying will make it worse, in my personal opinion, it makes it better because you're letting it out. And it may look like you're having a nervous breakdown and maybe you are, but at least you're having something versus nothing. And I will take that any day. I'm not condoning people to go out and just have nervous breakdowns, but I'm saying if you feel like life is just horrible, then cry. There's nothing wrong with it. I know we live in a society, especially towards men, but I think just all people that like crying of any sorts, is just, you're a wuss. And I, I just strongly disagree with that. I, you know, we were meant to cry. Our bodies were meant to do it. Obviously, part of it is some scientific, biological cleaning our eyeballs or whatever someone wants to tell me in the comments. But um, in my personal opinion, I think we were really meant to cry because sometimes there's nothing left to say and there's nothing left to do but cry. And that's what makes us feel better because we let it go. We let it out of our eyeballs. <laughs> and we let it flow down our faces <laughs> so there's that um taking a shower i have found that when i am getting very depressed i will not take showers i find that even if i'm not depressed I won't. <laughs> sometimes i won't take showers which uh is not attractive i know but honestly i just i don't care anyway so 
taking a shower, taking long showers, taking a bath, which I don't do as often, but oh my gosh, baths are nice. Um, I miss those days when you're a kid and you just don't realize how much you're going to miss baths when you're older. But um, baths, showers, whatever, are great to let your hair get wet and let your body get wet, which don't even take it there. Um, you know, to just be in unison almost with the water. I love when I go to the beach and I just float in the water because I feel so in unison with the ocean and with the ocean's soul. And I'm starting to sound like a hipster, so I'm just gonna move on. Anyway, so uh, this is more for, for women or men, I don't know, but putting on makeup and pampering and hygiene. So I'm just gonna use stereotypes, please don't kill me, but for women using putting on makeup like today I put on makeup um I wasn't sure if I was gonna make this video or not because I was kind of just like uh I am still full of chicken nuggets and I kind of just don't want to fold my clothes from my laundry that are piled up over here off screen and I kind of just want to watch anime all day but that's not a good productive thing to do so <laughs> I was like, let me just put some makeup on and maybe I'll feel better. And I did a little bit. It's not like the miracle cream of everything that some women make it seem like. You put on makeup and your life is fixed, darling. It's the 1950s. Put on some makeup and then your life will be better and everything will be nice and you get yourself a good man. That's not, that's not even close to true. But anyway, um, I do find that when I do put makeup on, I feel a little bit better and I, and it actually helps my face ironically i guess it protects your skin or something which then clears up the tiny bits of acne i still have in my 20s yay um for guys i would say that like if you're looking scrounchy i don't think that's a word anyway i'm gonna go with it if you're looking scrounchy <laughs> and you need to shave or whatever um that guys do i think that can also help you feel better because you just look a little bit more clean or you look a little bit more fresh or I don't know whatever those buzzwords that those stupid commercials use for shaving companies you know what I'm talking about anyway so um, the last thing I'll say is uh, talking laughing crying with a friend friends are magical gems that God made for when you're having a nervous breakdown. Um, I don't know how many times that I have bothered and bothered my friends every single time I have an existential crisis and every time I'm ready to jump off the bridge, not literally, um, they are there to say, whoa now, cowboy, <laughs> wait a second there. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. Oh, I'm really delirious this episode. Quality content. Anyway, so, uh, I have found that calling friends I haven't talked to in a while and actually calling them, like hearing their voice or FaceTiming them and seeing their beautiful face. I have found that that is the best thing to do when dealing with a mental illness. And you can talk to friends and be honest with them how you're feeling, where your head's at, and that you just want to laugh or you just want to talk or you just want to cry and not hear some you know, solution or whatever. You're not looking for a solution. You're just looking for support. You're looking for comfort and that's it. And that's enough, you know? Um, and if you don't have friends like that, then, you know, I would love to be there for you, but unfortunately I have a busy life, but please do try to find groups and things like that of people who will just be there for you. They don't necessarily need to give you a solution unless you're looking for one, um, which sometimes I am. But other times I just I just want to feel like crap and I want you to be okay with it, you know? And of course they're not gonna be fully okay with it, but they'll just be there. And that is the most grateful thing I'll ever have in my life is friends like that. And you know who you are. I won't list all of you, but you know who you are and I love you. I love you. Okay, so with like, oh my gosh, it's been 20 minutes. I'm sorry. With 20 minutes of mental illness advice, that literally was a tiny paragraph, I am now going to talk about some fun things. 
So I posted a thing on my Instagram, which you can follow me at Liz Not Lizzie Pod. Um, and if you haven't subscribed already to this this podcast slash YouTube podcast, what are you doing, darling? You need to subscribe. Press the button. I still I think it's on this side. I think it's my left hand. Okay. Anyway, so um, then uh, the thing I posted on my Instagram was a picture of various interracial couples that I love in fiction. So it was Annie and Philip from The Greatest Showman. It was Arthur and Gwen from the BBC TV show Merlin. It was Pocahontas and John Smith from Disney's Pocahontas. And it was the recent loving movie that came out. So I will start up by saying this. I love interracial couples. I love them so much. I want to be in one myself. But I love interracial couples. And I think I fell in love with them, as I said before, when I was a kid and I watched Pocahontas and I saw her fall in love with John Smith, someone who didn't look like her, who didn't necessarily sound like her, not the same skin tone, not the same culture, not the same anything. And to see two people of such drastically different worlds fall in love with each other was so profound to me as a child. Like just, it just shaped the rest of my life. And ever since then, I have felt the same way. I love interracial couples more than any other couple in the world because to me, it proves that love has no bounds when it comes to race. Love is love. And love, it goes beyond the color of your skin. And that's really what unconditional love is. Even if you're married to someone who does have the same skin tone as you, to have friends that are a different skin tone from you or whatever, that's love right there. Because love is not about comfortability. It's about vulnerability. It's about change. It's about being challenged. And interracial couples, I feel like, are just the epitome of that. Like, I just... Oh, I, I love them so much. I love them so much. They're so adorable. And I feel like my, like, the most emotional I've ever felt watching a couple like that was in The Greatest Showman with Anne and Philip. Like, I saw my friend Hope. I was just like, I cried. Like, <laughs> I was like, I cried. The song we were at the stars, I think, is like the pinnacle of like, my personal experiences of viewing interracial couples, of wanting to be in an interracial couple, and all these other things. This one line that Zendaya sings that's like, uh, I'm not the one you were meant to find, is just like, <laughs> it's just so good. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Like, <laughs> Oh my God. And I just, I relate to it. I relate to it so much. Like, I feel like sometimes, and this is a little controversial, I'm sorry, but I feel like sometimes, you know, we feel like because someone is of same race as us or whatever, like, that's the person we're supposed to find. That's the person we're supposed to be with or whatever. And that's not true. At the end of the day, you're supposed to be with someone that you really love and they really love you. And, you know, they challenge you to be a better person, their partner, their best friend, whatever. And if they definitely end up being someone who doesn't look anything like you, not the same skin color, culture, whatever, like, be with them. <laughs> like, be with them. Not just because I'll be hyped and want to come to your wedding, but <laughs> be with them. Um, also, my, f oh my gosh, my, my favorite couple that actually had me like swooning. I don't swoon, okay? I do not like romance movies or certain romance subplots. I'm not a big fan of them. I'm not against them. I just, I'm not a big fan. They have to really be like good or be interracial or uh, spicy or something like that. But when I say that every time that I watch Merlin, and I see Gwen and Arthur on screen together. I squeal like a middle school girl. It's just, it's bad. It's really bad. I squeal like a middle school girl watching, seeing like One Direction or something like that. Is that still relevant? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> um, so they have this theme song that I actually listen to 
on repeat okay on youtube and i might link it in the description but every time that the violin starts i would convulse in my chair i'm not even kidding like it would just be like a little little violin and i would be on the floor like, it would be so bad. And it's so adorable, not just because they're an interracial couple, obviously, but just because them as a couple are couple goals. They're so adorable. Like, Gwen and Arthur, like, at first, you're like, they don't exactly get along. Like, he's a spoiled prince and she's a humble servant, but she also has quite the personality and attitude, and we love that. We love nuance. We love female characters that are not just... <sighs> anyway, so she probably challenges him the most. And I love it so much. And it's so adorable. And there was this one scene in particular where Arthur was staying at her house. I don't remember why. And he slept in her bed without asking which he shouldn't do that anyway but he, he just assumed right and he was like oh i didn't know and she was like well why would you you're a spoiled brat basically and he was like well you could have told me and she's like you don't have to someone shouldn't have to tell you not to sleep in their bed it's their bed it's their whatever and if people weren't so afraid to tell you stuff maybe you wouldn't be so spoiled you'd actually be raised with a bit of humility and knowing that like not everything revolves around arthur and like i swear although he was offended i'm pretty sure that's when he fully fell in love with that woman and honestly i can't anyway the thing that also kills me that causes me to convulse and yes i'm just fanning on about arthur and gwen and if you're annoyed at me i don't care um, watch the show and then you'll get it. But um, the thing that really kills me is that Arthur always called her Gwen. He didn't really call her Guinevere, her full name, unless he was really trying to get her attention or trying to get her to calm down. And there'd be times where Gwen would be like freaking out and like, Arthur, blah, 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 blah. and Arthur would be like, Gwen, 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 Guinevere. And every time he says that, I don't know if it's the accent of the actor, but I swear, I swear. Like, every time I would have a heart attack and have to resuscitate myself. <laughs> like, it was just so, oh, they're just so freaking adorable. Okay, my fangirling is over now. I don't want to spend this whole video fangirling. But the point is, is that I'm obsessed with interracial couples. Please let me know of any interracial couples that you guys are obsessed with in the comments down below. Let me know if you've seen Merlin. Let me know if you've seen The Greatest Showman, in which I think almost every human being has seen it, even if they don't like it, which is like... Okay, but anyway, so I'm done talking about that. The last thing that I will talk about for today is anime, obviously. Uh, there has to be a segment about anime. I wanted to talk about the comedy anime Mob Psycho 100. If you have not heard about it, I suggest you watch it on Crunchyroll because that's all I do lately. Um, Crunchyroll.com. And uh, it's also like, I think the header of my YouTube channel now, because I change my YouTube header like every other day. But as of right now, it's Mob Psycho. So Mob Psycho is a little hard to explain, but basically it's an anime show that takes place during our time, but it's in Japan as most anime is. Um, and there are spirits and things that sometimes haunt human beings or whatever, like ghosts, spirits, demons, whatever. And people, who can kind of uh, stop them or whatever are called psychics. Um, and psychics are basically what they sound like. They can, they have telekinesis, but they also can tap into the, kind of the spiritual world and like fight the spirits that are in our world, things like that. So it's about a high schooler mob who has these phenomenal, like uh, prodigy, like uh, psychic abilities, but he is very shy and very insecure and kind of humble and like he's just he's an adorable little gumdrop okay he even looks like a gumdrop he's just like adorable little cinnamon roll and i want to protect him from everyone and he's so sweet and uh he has like this amazing gift and basically his boss that he works for who is a 
psychic, um, but is actually more like a psychic fraud. Um, he works for him and he'll call mob when he has a client who's like, there's a demon that's like in my laundry basket or something stupid like that and uh, ask mob to take care of it or whatever. Um, but anyway, to anyone who is aware of the anime world, Mob Psycho, I think is the same people who did One Punch Man. And One Punch Man is also a comedy about superheroes and parroting kind of the superhero genre and everything like that. It's a great show. Definitely recommend it. Mob Psycho is kind of the same way and the same format of kind of making fun of, you know, um, people who are like, you know, mind readers and hand readers and psychics, like in our world, like nowadays, where they're like, I can sense that Betty is here, you know, things like that. Um, They kind of just are making fun of that. And they're making fun of the fact that Mob has like these like Superman gifts of psychicness, but he's like this little gumdrop that just wants a girl to like him, you know, um, he's so adorable. And, um, I love the show because not only is it a comedy, which, uh, One Punch Man is as well, but to me, it's more of a dramedy because there's actually a bit of character development for mob who goes from someone who kind of just goes along with what people tell him to do, including his boss to being someone who actually, you know, stands up for himself and is like, no, This is what I want to do. No, these are my friends. No, you can't just always tell me what to do. You can't take advantage of me. Things like that. Um, You know, mob is really the everyday kid in school that just wants to fit in or whatever and thinks that going along with things or letting people bully him or letting people tell him that he's a dork or he's weird or he's a loser or whatever you know, that'll somehow get them around to liking him or whatever. And, uh, yeah, so it's very inspirational. Um, I think it's also inspirational for people who deal with mental illness because Mob, his story almost reminds me of someone who also has a mental illness, who also just kind of wants to be normal, wants to fit in. Like, Mob has these amazing abilities that other people comment about, But at the end of the day, he actually just wants to be normal. Like, even though he has great powers, he's a loser in most of life. And, you know, I I feel that a lot. And I don't know how I connected it to mental illness, to be honest with you. My brain is, like, all over the place at the moment. I'm trying to stay on topic. But anyway, um, I definitely recommend the show to people. I recommend it for people who feel like nothing, (laughs) which I think we all can relate. Um, People who have mental illness and people who are introverts, people who are shy. Um, Mob is kind of a inspiration of character development to finding confidence in yourself and finding self-love and respect and just it's it's a great show it really is and it's really funny because just like one punch man like everybody's freaking out this bad guy comes everyone's freaking out but then you call mob and he takes care of it like that and it's like all done it's like oh um well i was pretty sure the world was going to end, but I guess it was nothing bigger than squashing a fly. So, uh, okay, cool, 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 cool. But, um, yeah, I definitely recommend Mob Psycho. Um, those are just the main things I wanted to talk about, uh, today in this episode, um, because my mental health has been not great. It has not been great, but I had fun making this episode, so I feel a little bit better now, which is nice. I did one of the things I recommended, which is laugh with a friend and you all shall be my friends. (laughs) But um, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, And I hope that you do subscribe, like, comment, all that wonderful, beautiful stuff. And uh, until next time, bye.